But my name is Alec. I serve on the team here at the Father's House of Thomas. And we have a couple exciting things that are happening in the month of December that we want to share with you, keep you guys updated on. The first one, which is happening today after service, is party with the pastors. Who here has done that? Who here has gone through party with the pastors? Right here, we got a couple people that have gone through it. Party with the pastors is where you're able to get connected with the pastors, get to know some of the other team members as well, learn the mission, the vision, and the values of TFH and Thomas, what we're all about. And as well as taking the Discover class, which is the second portion of Party with the Pastors, where you're able to do a spiritual assessment test, and that's going to be the following Sunday. So any of you that haven't gone through that, I highly encourage you to join, to go through that. It's an amazing experience, and you get to be a part of what's going on here in the house locally and also in the community. The next thing that's happening throughout the weeks and throughout the month is small groups. Who here is a part of a small group? The women's group, the young adults group, the youth group. Come on, let's make some noise for the small groups. These are happening throughout the week, throughout the month. We're coming up here on the end of uh, the semester for small groups. And, and that is going to be ending with a big Love Our City outreach, which is the next thing that's happening in the month of December. Who wants to get their hands dirty for the Lord? Who wants to go out and reach the neighborhoods, reach the people who are lost and far from God? Listen, y'all, this is a very practical way where we're able to be the hands and feet of Jesus. What does that mean? It means doing the things that Jesus did. Meeting people where they are, sharing the love of God with them, sharing the good news with them, and eventually leading them to a relationship with Jesus. And we have many different ways that you can get involved in the Love Our City Outreach event. One is Laundry of Love, where we pay for people's laundry. The Homeless Outreach. We have a toy drive, cuts and coffee, and then leading up to our big Christmas event, or our big event, which is the Saturday, December the 17th. And it's a combined outreach where all the teams are gonna get together, the whole church will get together. We're gonna be meeting at Nino's Park, in, in, out here in Natomas. And, uh, and from there, we're all gonna be combined, collectively going out into the neighborhoods, serving hot dogs. We're, I'm gonna be cutting hair, I'm a barber. You guys might not be able to get a haircut, but your friends and those who are far away from Christ, right, or maybe those who are in the neighborhood, might be able to get freshened up and receive some coffee and some love. We wanna draw those people near to Jesus, right? We want their lives to be changed as well and for them to experience a moment in his presence. And then we have our Christmas event. Who loves Christmas? Hey, tis the season to be jolly, la, 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 la. Come on, y'all, y'all, I know y'all love Christmas. This event, we're gonna be doing a toy drive and the kids choir. Who's excited to hear the kids sing? Man, the last time they did it, it was awesome. They got such beautiful voices. And so if you wanna partner with us, there's a couple different ways where you're able to buy some toys, donate some toys, and you can donate them and bring them next Sunday, or there's gonna be a drop-off zone throughout the week where we'll connect you with Bree. That, Bree, she's right here, actually, if you wanna raise your hand. She's gonna be at the front at the Connect desk, and you're, you're gonna be able to go out there and sign up, meet, let her know what time you're gonna be coming by to drop off some gifts for the kids. And last but not least, all this can be done without your giving. And we wanna thank you so much for your continued faithfulness and obedience and trusting God and putting him first in your finances. We have a couple different ways that you can give. They're gonna pop up on the screen here. And all this stuff is gonna be on the QR code where you can go and sign up and register to help out, whether it be for the Christmas event, the Love Our City Outreach, joining a small group, or party with the pastors or Discover. And let's pray for that offering real quick. If you have it ready or maybe you, you're, you're preparing it on your phone to give, but we just want to, we want to pray over that. Lord, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this offering, God, for this sacrifice. We want to thank you, God, that we are a church of ir irrational generosity, God, and that comes because you showed us first, Father, how to give. You gave your only son for us, Father, and we want to do the same thing in return by giving, Lord God, the very thing that we work for, God. Bless it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all, let's get ready for the message. Who's excited? Let's get up on our feet and let's make some noise. We got Pastor Matt in the house. Come on, give it up for Jesus one more time. Make some noise, TFH. Can we just, just lift your hands for a minute. Why don't we do that? 
Let's prepare our hearts for the word today. Because you're the name above all names. Worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Sing it one more time. Name above all names. Your name above all names. You're worthy, Lord. Worthy of all praise. My heart will sing. My heart will sing. How great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him a round of applause today. Woo! Wow. Well, that, it's been a unique Sunday thus far, has it not? Well, turn to two people and tell them you are a blessing, and then you can have a seat this morning. If it's your first time with us, thank you for joining us today. It's an honor to have you as our guest during these cold winter months, these bone-chilling Sacramento winters. Yeah, I, I just want to tell, say I, uh, I'm so grateful for our team. I know that there's been a, a little bit of a bug going around in town lately, and the past maybe three weeks, it's gone from one family to the next, and every week we have people who, are, who serve every week, and they're like, hey, we're not going to make it this Sunday. We're sick. So I want to ask you to remember to pray for people and also wash your hands. Take care of yourself, right? Um, just practical wisdom, you know, and do all that good stuff. Try to stay healthy this winter, especially because uh, we're going to need you out there in the community making a difference. Amen. It wants you nice, healthy, and strong physically and spiritually. Well, I'm going to get into the word today. Um, and uh, as we do that, well, we, right before we do that, I'll have you turn to Exodus 33. But right before we read the scriptures and pray, I wanted to share a few things that God's done in the past year or so. Um, that have really, as I just thought about it, have been a tremendous encouragement and um, reminders of the presence of God with, with us. Um, and they're going to put some of those things on the screen. Uh, I just want to celebrate for a moment together God's faithfulness. How many know that God has been faithful to us? Amen. In many ways. Um, we reopened last September. It's been a little over a year. Can you thank God that the doors were opened and we were able to secure a venue after 18 months of not being able to find a place to gather? Will you thank God for his provision? You know, just before the summer, around Easter time, the school opened back up, the district opened back up, and they said, hey, come on back in, and we we're able to move out of Four Points Hotel. It was a blessing for the season where we were there, but we were happy to come back here, and we're here today, and we're so grateful, amen. And uh, God has done such amazing things since then. Uh, he, last winter, we launched our first uh, round of outreaches, which we call We Love Our City. And I, if you guys could put that up on the screen, we, we love our city and we're continuing this year. We did about 10 projects, I believe it was, last year from serving coffee and praying for people at the grocery store, feeding the homeless, giving out care kits to those who don't have a place to live or to stay, staying under bridges, living in tents, living out of their cars. We have people uh, gathering throughout the week, uh, ministering and going to laundromats and just blessing people, paying for their laundry and serving them. And we even had a couple of people who are part of our church now who came from that. They gave their life to the Lord. God baptized. I showed that last week. It was Josh. He and his girlfriend, Kenya, are a special part of our young adult small group. And they're also part of our church. Amen. And uh, God just did amazing stuff. We were able to give over 100 gifts out to kids in our community. Can you say amen? We're a generous church. So uh, we want to continue to be a blessing to the world around us. We want to be salt and light. This, in the past year, we launched... Um, our, our, our first, very first small groups. Amen. How many are grateful for our groups that we have here? You're finding a community. You're getting connected to the family. Heard nothing but good reports and how they're all flourishing. We got women's groups. We got men's, young adults, youth, and there's going to be more to come. Are you pumped about it? That's a place for you to connect. We developed our core leadership team over the past year, spent time every week pretty much investing, training, going over DNA, culture, what it means to lead here at TFH, um, solving problems, 
making problems than solving them again. But uh, through the process, God has developed some amazing team leaders in the house. Would you give it up for all those who served through their leadership? They're building and equipping people for ministry. We're grateful for you guys. Um, so I, I'm so proud of that group. We've th check this out. This is this was actually pretty surprising. 107 people have served on our dream team at one point or another in the past year. Come on, thank the, thank God for every person who serves. Thank you for your servant leaders. We're, we appreciate you. Um, so it's been incredible, you know, uh, to see people step up and make a difference. And we're continuing to see that grow. Uh, even through the holiday season, more people are getting involved, joining the team, really, really making them this part of their life and their home and their family. This is their spiritual home, their spiritual family. Listen to this. Up to this point, we've given out over 14,000 to church planting missions through our ARC, and ARC network, which is our church planting network and other opportunities. There are churches in existence right now. We, listen, we're a baby church ourselves, but there are churches in existence right now because of your generosity, and they are thriving and making a difference all over the country. Would you say amen? And all over the, nation, all over the world, actually. Thank you for partnering with us. Um, we've launched, we launched our youth ministry. Any young, any youth in the house? All right. Our teens and our students in the house, we launched our youth ministry. They got to go to their first youth conference. Some of you generous people in the house, you, you even sponsored several young people. Some of our youth got saved at that conference. They surrendered their life to Jesus at that conference. If you could see some of those pictures, you see young people just pouring out their heart before God. I'm telling you, there's something God's doing in this generation. There's a revival coming. Don't let anybody tell you that there's no hope for the next generation. Amen. They're alive and well, and God's stirring their hearts for him. Sent to the youth conference. Their hearts were set on fire. Incredible experience. They have been having a youth group every week since. Um, it's been amazing to see what God's doing in that group of students. We also launched our first semester of School of Ministry. And we're so proud of our students. I'm telling you, this is an incredible batch of students. They did their final assignment in, in, in the last session for How to Study the Bible is coming up this to tonight, actually. But they did their final assignment for the Art of Preaching last Monday. And if I, I can't tell you enough how proud I am and Dr. Jim, Pastor Jim is for these guys, I'm telling you, God is stirring them up. He's raising up preachers and teachers of the word and leaders of the future, and they tore it up. I wish you guys were in the room when they preached the walls down. We had, we had, we had them preaching all these different messages uh, amongst them, but they were all connected and related somehow. And it's interesting how the Holy Spirit does that. But they preach with power. They preach, uh, they preach accurately. Right, they were able to exegete. They were able to discern the uh, the the meaning of the scriptures and interpret, translate it to our modern times, and give application and illustration and all that great stuff. We're so proud of our school of ministry. God did that, and it's incredibly amazing. In fact, over a year ago, when we were around, I think it was Legacy time, we shared a little bit of the vision that we we're going to launch school of ministry, and here it is. Another thing is being realized. God is making dreams come true. Amen. And it's just getting, we're just getting started, folks. We had 20 water baptisms. We do baptisms once a month, but we had 20 water baptisms in the past year, and that's incredible. Um, and there's more to come. Check this out. 300 people committed their life to Jesus Christ in the past year. Come on, somebody. I'm a numbers guy. I like numbers. So that's approximately 6.87 people per, per week committing their life to Christ. So somebody's going to be less than a person here today because they're their life to Jesus, but they're going to be made whole by the gospel. <laughs> but I love it. What, what, what God's doing in our midst, it's just absolutely incredible. And our heart is that we will multiply. We're just getting started. Only one full year um, operating in ministry since the pandemic. We only had three services before the pandemic, before everything shut down. But having a full year in now, rebuilding from scratch, I'm so proud of you, the Father's House, TFH. Amen. I'm honored to serve you as your pastor and to do life with you. I'm thankful for every one of you. The best is yet to come. Are you ready for 2023? Woo, it's going to be good. I'm going to share a little bit of vision in a few moments about what's to come. 
So I want you to prepare your heart, get ready. You might stretch a little face. Some of you might look at me like, what the heck is this guy on this morning? It's just coffee and Jesus. Exodus chapter 33 is our text for the morning, uh, the first one. We'll open up with this, we'll pray, and then we'll dig into a couple of passages, unpack the word, and uh, then I'll share some of the vision for 2023 for the house and how we can all partner together to make dreams become a reality for this new year. I'm excited about it. Exodus 33, 15, if you have your Bible, if you got your Bible app, you can pull up on your phone, you can look to the screen as well. Exodus 33, 15, if you have that, say, I'm ready. Exodus 33, 15, I want to talk to you today about multiplying the presence of God. Multiplying the presence of God. Then he said to him, if your presence, this is Moses speaking to Yahweh, God. If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight? Except you go with us. Go with us, Lord. So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. Somebody shout, we're different. Your wife, your wife might call you different sometimes when you're acting weird. She's like, you're different. <laughs> At least my wife does. But we're all different. The Bible also calls believers a peculiar people. It means weird. <laughs> In other words, we're different, we're separate, we're unique. Verse 17, so the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing which you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Would you turn to someone before we pray and tell them he knows you by name? Pray with me. Lord, we invite your presence right now as you were with Moses. As you were with the children of Israel, even when they didn't deserve it. As you were with the church in the book of Acts and throughout history, be with us now. Make us separate, a people of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Starfish are an interesting breed of creature. One of their unique abilities is that they have the ability to multiply by simply cutting off a limb. See, a starfish can actually amputate its own arm, and sometimes it'll do that to, to escape an enemy. Maybe they're squeezing through a tight spot, or the enemy actually tries to nibble or grip them with its teeth or something, and it actually amputate its arm. <laughs> Survival, huh? And it can amputate its arm. But what's so interesting about the, the starfish is that once it amputates that limb, that arm, it's not the end of that limb. That limb has the capability of becoming an entirely new starfish. It can multiply itself. It's really interesting, isn't it? When I was a kid, I had this fear of losing limbs. I don't know, I must have been like four. And I remember going up to my mom, specifically, I don't even know why I remember this, I went up to my mom and my dad, and I was thinking, I was just pondering this, this horrific uh, circumstance in which a person could lose a limb. And I thought about that, I was like, oh my gosh, what would I do without my fingers? What would I do without an arm or a leg or my big toe? I like that big toe. And I remember saying to my mom and my dad, I said, uh, if you, so if your uh, arm gets cut off, will it grow back? And I really meant it. I really thought, hey, maybe it grows back. I don't know why I thought that. I just thought, hey, maybe things happen. It doesn't happen, amen, so don't try it. <laughs> when Jesus said, hey, if you got sin, pluck out your eye, he did not mean that literally. You should have taken how to study your Bible with school and ministry. All right, so don't go cutting things off, amen. <laughs> But starfish have this unique ability. They can regenerate. They can, they can, they can sort of birth a, a, an entirely uh, new form of themselves simply by cutting off an arm. Sometimes 
It takes loss or willful sacrifice in order to gain. See, we're in this series called Multiply. Shout multiply. 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 It's all about multiplying uh, the kingdom, multiplying disciples, multiplying our mission as a church and what God's called us to. It's our word for the new year. 2023 is the year where we say we're going to multiply. Multiply groups. We're going to multiply disciples who followers of Jesus. We're going to multiply leaders. We're going to train them, equip them, and we're going to send them out. We're going to multiply future pastors and leaders, campus pastors. We're going to prepare to multiply church plants and campuses in the next several years and over the course. I believe we're going to get to a point where we're going to launch out churches and campuses every single year. Amen. Some of you are like, what the heck? How can you even do that? Well, I don't know about your God, but my God can do the impossible. <laughs> Amen. And so I choose to believe for that. And so we're, we're, we're preparing for not just multiplication in various ways through 2023, but in the future. We're thinking five years, ten years, and beyond. In many ways, we're thinking beyond our lifetime. Should the Lord tarry, what will TFH Natomas be when we're gone? Should the Lord tarry? Our heart is that it will be a church that's impacting the, the, the future generations. See, I believe, like you, the, your parents, as well as I am, I got my three beautiful children. I'm so proud of them. Seeing my daughter, Malay, on the keys this morning, seeing Sayla singing for the first time up here today. Thank you, worshiping, and Jared, for, for, for believing in the next generation. I'm so proud of them. But, but, but I, I think about the, the world that they will grow up in. And the truth that this church, what we build today, will shape tomorrow. And what we build today will be the house that they live in, spiritually speaking. The community we shape together now that we sacrifice for, that we invest in, that we serve, that we, that we build together by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Christ for the glory of God in our city, this lighthouse will be what's available to them in the next 20, 30, 40 years should the Lord carry. And when I think about that, I'm humbled, but I'm also a little nervous because I want to make sure that we're building something that they can continue to flourish in. We want to build a house that our grandkids can grow in the faith in, and they can find refuge at TFH. They can find strength at TFH, and they can fulfill their God-ordained purpose in this house. Sometimes in order to become greater, to become more, to multiply, it takes sacrifice. You got to cut off some things. <laughs> See, we're talking about multiplication. I don't want to give you any idea or notion that that is an easy process. Oh, let's go multiply. Yes! Yeah, we're going to double our small groups. Let's do it. Listen, somebody, somebody, there's something that's given up for that to happen. Are you with me? Someone's, those small group leaders are loving people and bringing community together, and they're giving up time. They're giving up time. They're giving up emotional energy because they're shepherding that group of people and investing their life into them. Are you hearing me right now? That's not a small sacrifice. When those youth leaders serve our kids week in and week out, that's not a little thing. It takes time and energy and preparation for sermons and counseling young people when they're going through the ups and downs of being a teenager. Are you hearing me right now? When I was a youth pastor, I didn't have to deal with the stuff they're having to address today. So there's, 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 a, there's a, a, a certain degree in every area in which we desire to expand our impact and influence, a certain necessity of sacrifice. When we talk about sending out churches, that's not free, that's not cheap, and that does not go without cost. It costs effort. It causes human life spends. It, 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 causes, it, it costs us sacrifice in terms of sending out people that could build here in the future. But we say, hey, we think we could do more if we cut off an arm and we send it out because we're, we don't want to be just one starfish in the pond. We want to be a couple in the, beach ocean, in the oceans. Are you hearing me right now? <laughs> See, we're in a culture that only thinks about digging big, but we don't think about going long and far. And so it's like, how many people can we pack in the building? That is the measure of our success. But the measure of kingdom of success is not the amount of people you can fit in the building, even though we're all about reaching more people. As long as there's one person in our city who's going to hell, we don't have enough people in this church. But here's the thing. 
Success in the eyes of God for a church is not how many people you can pack into a building. It's about how many people surrender their lives to Christ and become healthy, fruitful disciples who make disciples and surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you right now, not everybody who goes to church on Sunday is going to heaven. Gary Vaynerchuk can pack out an auditorium better than I ever could. <laughs> if you're this entrepreneur type of person, you like that guy. He cusses a lot, but he's authentic. I like that. <laughs> we'll multiply the presence of God. So when we re read Exodus chapter 33, and God is ha having this conversation, Moses, because Moses was unique amongst the people of Israel. Moses is a man who led, stepped out in faith, and he, he called God, God called him and appeared to him, manifested himself before Moses at the burning bush, and he, and he called Moses to go and liberate his captive children and, and set them free from the hand of Pharaoh and oppression and slavery. And at the hand of Moses, miracles and signs were done in Egypt. At the hands of Moses, an entire nation was set free from captivity and was able to move out of Egypt towards the promise of God for their in entire people. But there was something about the children of Israel throughout history, their history, their existence that they struggled with. It was idolatry. See, some, just because you're out of Egypt doesn't mean that Egypt's out of you. Sometimes people think switching up cities is going to change things, and it could help, but unless you get to the heart issue and the condition of the inner, inner life, that's gonna, it's always going to come after you. Because the problem's not what's around me, it's what's inside of me. It's the longing, it's the desire, it's the craving for unhealthy relationships and toxic men or women or sinful habits. That's what's destructive. It's not everyone else's fault. When I stand before Jesus in eternity, he's not going to say, what did you, who, who, who's to blame for your bad behavior? <laughs> Well, my mom, you know, one day she didn't make me lumpia, and I got really upset because you know how everybody loves lumpia. I'm half Filipino, but I love it like I'm twice the Filipino as anybody else. And you don't even have to be Filipino to like lumpia. Everybody likes lumpia, right? Everybody. Give me that lumpia. I got upset, and so... I said, I'm never going back to churches. I'm never serving the Lord from this day on. <laughs> That's not going to cut it, right? Because we all get to this place where we are accountable for our own responses to God. Our own surrender. Tell somebody, your surrender matters. So Moses has this conversation with God. God is, he's had it. He's like, I done sent you my servant Moses. <laughs> I performed wonders by his hand. I set you free from captivity, slavery, oppression, bondage, all of that. I set you free. And you go and build idols to worship instead of worshiping the one true God. Because Egypt was still inside. They were out of Egypt, but Egypt was still living inside of them. And what they grew up accustomed to because they grew up in captivity became the altar of their hearts. Listen, beware. Everything that you grew up in, everything that you were trained in, the context in which you were raised does not mean that that was the right way. Just because your mama told you that all men are bums doesn't mean that all men are bums. <laughs> Just because your daddy called you stupid doesn't mean you don't have a genius IQ. Are you with me right now? Doesn't mean you can't do something significant in life. There are so many things that we grew up with. Toxic upbringing in our, the culture of our home. You could not communicate without getting bashed. People called you ugly and, and dumb and stupid. You, had, you were not respectful of your parents. You were fearful. There, there were things that went on that were uh, horrific that took place in the home, but it was not a drug because it was family just because you grew up in it doesn't mean it needs to keep growing in you 
just because your grandfather and your grandma and your daddy was an alcoholic doesn't mean you can't walk in liberty and sobriety and victorious power in the name of Jesus Christ. Just because lust goes down through generations in your ancestry, your lineage does not mean you can't walk in holiness and purity and save yourself for the right person. Are you hearing me right now? Just because you come from a line of heroin addicts and methamphetamine addicts doesn't mean you can't walk into the house in your right mind, sharp as a tack, full of the Holy Spirit, liberating people who struggle with what your families, just because you were in it, doesn't need it mean it needs to stay in you. Just because you grew up in poverty doesn't mean poverty needs to stay in you. Just because you grew up in anger doesn't mean you can't be healed of your anger. Just because your parents were bitter doesn't mean you can't be your forgiver. Just because everything around you was poisonous doesn't mean you can't be a healer and a spiritual mender of broken hearts. Are you hearing this today? Just because you were in it doesn't mean it needs to stay in you. But it stayed in them. And they worshiped the gods they were used to instead of the God who set them free. So Moses <laughs> is having to kind of go to bat for them. And God's like, I'm done with this. I think I'm just going to wipe them out. Yeah. So for all the people who say, you know, God doesn't do that. <laughs> God doesn't judge people. On the contrary, he's like the one who can judge people ultimately, right? Because <laughs> when you're perfect, you can do whatever you want because everything you do is right. How, how ignorant are we to think we can tell God how to be God? We're doing what they did, trying to create gods in our own image. I don't feel God should be this way. I feel God should act this way, behave this way, accept this. That's the God I want to serve. The only problem is he's, that's not the true God, not the God of the Bible. And so God's like, I'm done. I'm going to wipe them out. And guess what, Moses? I'm going to start a new nation from you. We're going to start with you. Clean slate, your offspring. We'll start. I'll start a new people. You ever feel like that? <laughs> huh? You ever feel like that with people? Yeah, I'm going to close down my Instagram account. Because <laughs> I really only want to unfriend three people, but I know if I unfriend those three people, they're going to start talking smack, posting about me, calling up my wife, calling up my mom. They're going to start hating. So what I'm going to do is actually just, just, just unplug and, and shut down my account for like a month and make it look like I just got away from everybody, but it's really only three people that I'm going to get away from. Hey, y'all know what I'm talking about. Hello. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. <laughs> you got canceled. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You didn't like my past 20 selfies? I mean, come on. They all look the same. <laughs> they all look the same. Just because you tilt your head this way instead of this way does not mean you look any more beautiful. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> What is it, a different shade of mascara? What is it? I don't know, because it literally looks like the past year is all the same. It's like. I don't need to see all that. One, one pic of you is fine. That's good. That's good. We love you. We know. And you know what? Yes, you know what you look like. People straight up love themselves, man. Ah, sometimes I have a good day. I'll be like, ah, oh, look. I'm cute today. But a lot of days I'm like, I ain't posting nothing. Get yourself out of there. <laughs> Looking all raggedy today. Woke up with your, 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 on the wrong side of the bed. Half your hair gone. <sighs> anyway, so he's having this conversation with God. And God says, I'm going to wipe him out. We're going to start over with you. But Moses says, please, spare them. And because Moses has this relationship with God. This is why it's important to be a person of prayer. Because there are things that are only changed and unleashed in the earth when people pray for them. So people, some people are like, well, God's will is God's will. So, I mean, if it's God's will, it's going to happen regardless. You know, no. You know what God's will is? Prayer. That is God's will. And when you do God's will, stuff will or will not happen. Are you hearing me? Amen? So when we participate with God the way he desires, incredible things can happen. So Moses said, please don't. Spare them. 
They're yours. Please. So God says, okay, Moses. It was like, it was like a two-second prayer. <laughs> it wasn't even a hard, hard to debate. He's like, yeah, okay, all right. I won't, I won't wipe them out. <laughs> and so Moses, like, he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you to take them to the promised land. Take them to Canaan. That's where I want the prom- I, But I, I'm not going to go with you. I'm not going to go in their midst. My presence will not be with them. Moses is not satisfied. You know what Moses says? He says, please. Listen, if you send, don't even send this out. Don't take us up from here. I don't want to go where your presence is not with us. If your presence is not with us, it means your grace and your favor is not with us. And he's, he's explaining to God as if God didn't know, but this is how relational God is. He hears the stuff that we tell him that he already knows, that we think we know, and he knows it much better than us. But he actually listens and engages with us because he's a relational God. And he never runs out of time, amen? So he's got all the time in the world. She's like that great auntie who always thinks that she, you have, she should be able to access you at any given moment. And, and it's like, why ain't you answering your phone? No, I'm at work. I called again. No, I was putting the bed, kids to bed. But I called again. I was with my wife. <laughs> like, <laughs> so God says, all right. I'll go with you. I'll be with you. I'm going to do what you ask. There's something beautiful about the presence of God. The presence of God changes everything. I have been to places and environments where there is a lot of noise and there's a lot, a lot of stuff and there's no presence. And that's not a judgment against anywhere. It's just not there. Just call like it is. There's no presence. (laughs) All right? That's not what we're here to build. We're here to build a place where the presence of God dwells. And when people who are desperate and hurting and broken and suicidal and addicted or unbelieving walk into this house, they can come and experience the reality of the living God, his presence, his mercy, his forgiveness, the moving of his spirit, breathing into their souls, the word which is alive, stirring their hearts. We want a house of the presence of God, a house of the presence Moses said, I'm not going. I don't want to go without you. I don't want to go without you. As a kid, it was my greatest fear is to ever have to do life without my family. It was horrific thinking about the day my grandma would pass away. I hated thinking about that stuff. I hated thinking about doing life at some point without the people I loved. And this is probably how Moses felt. He's like, no, we, we, we work together, you and I. You let, I met you at the burning bush. You gave me words when I didn't believe I could speak. You, you, you gave me power to perform miracles against the most powerful man on the earth. I am not going without you. I don't want the promised land if you're not with me. You can have all the milk and honey and all the riches and all the property and all the cattle on a thousand hills. If I don't have your presence, I don't want any of it. I want you. But the reality is so many people today do not realize they are not connected to the presence of God because they're connected to other appealing things. Things that entice according to the appetites of the flesh. Things that distract us and divert us from God. We are called to be a people of the presence. Somebody shout the presence. Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Somebody shout heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you. Listen to Jesus. Lo, I am with you. Hear Jesus. Lo, I am with you even to the very end of this age. I am with you forever. That's what he told his disciples. I'm with you. 
I'm sending you out, but I'm not sending you alone. Some of you needed to catch that today because you feel like you're alone in this mission and journey of serving God because you're the only one in your house who's serving the Lord. You're the only one in your house who's 100% all in with God, and the Lord wants you to know I've sent you out, but I'm not sending you alone. My presence goes before you. My presence is upon you. My presence is within you. My presence is your rear guard. My presence is to your left and to your right, and as long as I am with you, what can man say against you? Don't fear the world. Don't fear persecution. Don't fear the person who turns their, their, vo- their words against you to sort of strike you down. Know that I'm with you, and that's greater than anything on the planet. Well, what do we get from Matthew 28 about the presence of God? One that the presence of God is with his people. Any people of God in the house. Jesus said, I am with you. I am with you. He's talking to believers. He's talking to disciples. I am with you, even to the end of his age. We learn that the presence of God is with us as we pursue his mission. This is in the context of this command to go and disciple nations, preach the gospel, teach them how to follow and obey Christ, be like him, and reach the world for him. And yet, and he caps it off by saying, I'm with you. Because you don't want to go anywhere that God's not with you. And so he reassures them, listen, I'm sending you to the nations. I'm sending you to this whole wide world. You're going to break out of this little town called Jerusalem. You're going to break out of your own country. Don't be afraid. They might persecute you. They might hate you, imprison you. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. He's with his people. He's with his people as they pursue his mission. He's, the presence of God is with us as, as, as we proliferate, as we make disciples, as we produce churches, we multiply, we replicate. The presence of God is with us in that task. It's with us when we, it's with us perpetually. He said forever to the end of, to the, end of the age, I'm with you. There's never a moment your life will want, run out of breaths and moments before you run out of presence. Let me say that again. Your life will run out of moments, minutes, seconds, breaths, and heartbeats before you ever run out of the presence of God. Somebody ought to thank God that he's with you today and say, thank you, Lord. I'm not in this alone. Amen. The presence of God is with us when we make disciples, when we proliferate. And it means we increase the amount of a thing. We multiply. We, we, we expand. He's with us as we increase. He's with us as we reach more people, as we, send out, as we start new small groups, as we send out campuses, as we start new ministries, as we raise up leadership teams. He's with us in that. Ephesians 1.23 says, and the church is his body. It is filled by Christ. What is filled by Christ? The church, which is his body. It's a metaphor. We are the physical expression of God's presence in the earth. We are the tangible, physical extension, the hands and the feet of Jesus in the earth. He is the head of the body, and we are a body to his head. He tells us where to go, and we do it. He tells us where to love, and we do it. He tells us where to preach, and we do it. And the church is a body. It is filled by Christ who fills everything everywhere with what? With his presence. Listen, do you get what he's saying? That is so heavy and too deep to just completely grasp. But Ephesians, Paul is telling the church in Ephesus that Jesus fills everything, okay? He fills the entire universe. In some supernatural, mysterious way, he is in every, he's everywhere around us, all right? There's this omniscience, omniscience to the nature of God. It means it, I'm not, uh, it's omni, omnipresence. Omniscience means he's all-knowing. Om, omnipresence means he's everywhere at once. Only he, these are the attributes of God. But it means that he can be everywhere at once, yet he's still with you. There's, there's a sense in where God is everywhere I go. But there's also this sense in which he is with you as a spirit-filled, indwelt by the Spirit of God, believer, that he's with no other people. He's with his church like he's, no, like, like, like he's with no other people. Just like Moses said, your presence with us separates us from all other peoples. It's true today. So when people come up with these ideas like we're all God's children, you know, we're all God's creation. 
But not everybody's God's child unless they've been born again of the Spirit of God through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance of sins. Uh, we're not all God's children. We're all creatures created in the image of God. We're all human beings. But only those who put their faith in Christ and are born again of the Spirit of God are children of God. The Bible tells us, hey, you've been born, you've been, you have been born of the light or of the spirit, so now walk like you're a child of the light. You have been born again, you're a new creation. Why? Because not everybody is that. You can't change your behavior, your perspective, your attitude, and the way you see the world, your worldview, if, if, if you're not a new creature, a new person. Being a child of God is separated, being separate. You carry the presence of God with you. Habakkuk 2.14 says this, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of, of the Lord as the water covers the sea. How, how will this be done? How is this happen? How can the earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God? The preaching of the gospel. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. There has never been an era in all of human history in which prophecies such as this could actually be realized. We live in critical, crucial times in which the whole world is getting nearer to the knowledge of the glory of God in the earth, whether they believe in that knowledge or not. And how does that happen when we multiply disciples, when we send out new churches, when we hit the local mission field and the foreign mission field? Can I get an amen right now in the house today? Matthew 18, 20, Jesus said, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Even when, even, even, even when it's two or three, church, when, even when it's ten women at a Panera gathering for small group, guess what? Jesus said, I'm there. I'm there. You're, you're, you're sipping on your soup, drinking your iced tea. I am there. When it's three leaders in a room brainstorming the next move and initiative in the church, he says, I am there. When it's 100 people, 150 people in the worship service, 200, he says, I'm there. When it's 10 or 20 kids in a kid's classroom, he says, I am there in the midst of you. Wherever you go, wherever you gather in my name, there will be my presence. You are separate from the world. You're different from the world. You've been consecrated by the very presence of God and makes you different from any other people in the world. It makes you separate. Don't take it for granted. So when the church multiplies, the presence multiplies. Because we are carriers of the presence of God. So in the next couple of years when we send out a new campus... We're not just sending out people. We're sending out the God who goes with them. <laughs> and they'll be crying out, don't send us out unless your presence is with us. When we hit our schools and share the love of Jesus and serve our students in our community, we're not just equipping and empowering youth to make a difference. We're equipping them to walk in confidence because the presence of God is with them. No matter what the generation says, no matter what culture spews out, he is with them and he is for them. When we raise up leaders in the house of God, we're not just raising up people who can function based on their own experiences, knowledge, training, or, or, or education. We're, we're raising up people who say, I can only do this if the presence of God is with me wherever I go. His presence is everything. And for the believer, he's in you. So in 2023 and beyond, we are going to be committed to multiplication multiplying the glory and presence of God in the earth. Because wherever you go, wherever we go, in the name of Jesus, he will be with us. In the nations and in the Thomas, in the back alleys with the drunks, under the bridges with the homeless, and in the midtown coffee shops with the hippies and the hipsters, as my uncle would say, we will bring the presence of God. In the hood with the thugs, the pimps, and the, and the prostitutes, we will bring the presence of God. In the hospitals with the sick and the dying, we will bring the presence of God. With the babies in their diapers and the teenagers running the streets, we will bring the presence of God for the pregnant 17 year old who doesn't know what to do with her life 
and she's lost and hurting, we will bring the presence of God to her, to the addict who's given up on life because he's lost his family and his wife has left him. We will bring the presence of God to him, to every street corner and every neighborhood and every marketplace and every sector of Sacramento and beyond. We are the church. We are the carriers. We are those who bear the presence of the living God, and we will carry his presence to our city that needs him. The presence of God is necessary. Let me share with you some vision, tell you how we can get involved in bringing the presence of God to our city in a greater way in 2023. Are you ready for this? All right, so here's some vision. Bear with me. We've had incredible small groups in 2022. Our faith goal for 2023 is to double small groups. Not only are our small groups going to grow, but they're going to send out other small groups. We're going to have multiple women's small groups, multiple men's small groups, multiple young adult small groups, more youth small groups. Are you hearing me right now? Because people need connection. They need community. They need relationship. They need intimacy. They need to love and be loved. That is the church. We love each other and build each other up in the faith. So we're going to double our small groups. We're also dreaming, we're going to double our dream team. What are our dream team? It's the people who save, serve, so that we can reach people who need Jesus. Amen. It's the usher who had a hard week, but he shows up on Sunday morning and greets you with a smile and shows you to your seat. It's the worship singer who gets up on stage and says, I've had a difficult, challenging week, but the presence of God is with me. And when I step onto this platform, I'm going to lead people into an encounter with his presence. It's the person behind the soundboard who says, I'm learning as I go go, but I'm going to grow as I go, and I'm going to make sure people can accurately hear the beauty of the music that's coming from the instruments playing and the voices lifted and the harmonies gelling together so that people can find that there is a God who inhabits praises. It's the person in kids' ministry who's loving kids like their own because they believe in the future generation and they want to create a legacy with you as parents. It's the person at the front door with a smile on their face, and you wonder why they're so happy, but you don't realize that they got a story of redemption and healing, and there was years, maybe a decade, where they had no reason to smile. Now when they stand in the house of God, they got joy. They got peace. They've been restored. Yeah, they're going to smile your way into the house. It's the person struggling mentally and emotionally, but their faith is in Christ. And they say, I'm in the presence of God. This is a safe place. I can be real, I can be healed, and I can serve and make a difference. I don't have to be perfect. I might feel like a, a starfish with a limb cut off, but God's making something out of that. He's multiplying something out of my pain. He's going to bring people healing. So we're going to double our dream team. Some of you already are already making that a, a reality. We're getting closer. I'll share that with you in a moment. This is crazy, but I like it. I want, to I want to see us serving 100 kids and youth every week. Some of you are like, what the heck? No. And you're like, stop it. Stop it. All the kids' ministry people are like, oh, you need to shut up right now. I'm not going to tell you that, but in my mind, I'm thinking, no, listen, 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 listen. That can't happen unless the team expands and grows. Are you with me right now? But the team expands and grows and multiplies, so will the kids. Are you hearing me right now? That means in order to make that happen, we need to have the best anointed youth and kids ministry that we can ever, ever pray for in our city. And I believe God wants to do that. That our youth are going to have 30, 40, 50 teens in their youth nights. Are you hearing me right now? Come on, let's get a vision for this generation. I'm tired of people talking about how lazy they are, how unintentional they are, how, how, lack of, lack of drive, how much of a lack of drive they have. Let me tell you something right now. There is a revival brewing in the 17-year-olds, the 15-year-olds, and our 12-year-olds, and they're just waiting for somebody to call out the purpose in them and say, I believe in what God's put in your life. We're going to be that church. We're going to be that house where our sons and daughters will be like arrows launched into the world to impact it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we're going to do, we're going to launch Jesus clubs in our schools. I'm so proud of young Leah over here. 
I've been putting her on the spot, so pray for her, pray for her. But her, she, 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 she came up to me. Can I say this? Is it okay? She came up to me last service, and I put a challenge before. I said, I said, Leah, you know, I'm just throw this out there, no pressure. But what, have you ever thought about starting like a, a Bible club at your high school? Have you start, started something reaching students? And she's like, it depends on what that entails. <laughs> Smart girl, <laughs> read the read the fine print, right? <laughs> before you start on that dotted line. She came up to me last week. That was two weeks ago. She came up to me last week after service. She was waiting. I was talking to some folks. She came up to me. She goes, I just wanted to you know I thought about what you said, and I want to do it. I want to take Natomas High School for Jesus. You have no idea how pumped we are as a church. And we're like, I, I went up to Eddie. I said, hey, that girl's got the hand of God on her life, man. We're going to back that. I'm like, Eddie, I don't care if you don't like that. We're going we're gonna to do it. He, he loves it, of course. Eddie has a heart for it. But I, I'm thinking, I don't care what anybody says. We're going into that school. We're going to support her. We're going to buy her all the pizzas she needs at lunch hour. We're going to help fund her flyers and invites to her students. She's going to see 20, 30, 40, 50. We're going to put up our events to serve in high schools, bring the love of Jesus. Christ to that generation. We're going to see students who are thinking about suicide coming to find healing in the presence of God because young people like that are growing in the house and in the presence of the Lord. We're launching Jesus Clubs. Get ready, Natomas. Get ready, Enderkim. Get ready, North Highlands. I don't care. Give us a school and we'll send somebody out there to start something for Jesus and to bring the presence of God to our campuses. Somebody praise him right now. Come on. Do you believe he can do this? I can't go on there as a preacher. I can't lead it. It has to be student-led. Eddie can't lead it as a youth leader. It has to be student-led, which means what? We need to be intentional about believing in and empowering our young people to make a difference. She can bring in whoever she wants. She might say, Pastor Matt, you're too loud. I don't want to bring you in. I'm going to bring in Eddie. You might scare half the students away. That's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Or she might say they like that there. It's pretty rowdy sometimes. So let's get up in there. She can bring whoever wants, but she's in charge of it. So we're, gonna, we're with you, Leah, and we believe in you. How much, church, do you believe in our young people? Do you believe in Leah? Do you believe in, in, in Aaron and Malaya and Selah and all of our students here? We believe in you guys. Let's get in some continuation high schools. What about that? <laughs> We want to see 200 personal invites every week. Like, what the heck, Pastor Matt? Yeah, that means we're going to have invite cards printed up for the rest of the year. And every week you're going to get two cards in your hands. And we're going to pray together for 60 seconds about who God would lead us to, friend or foe or stranger. And we're going to say, God, at the end of this service, we are sent. We don't leave the church. We are sent as the church. Lead us to the people who need to have this card in their hand. And every week should amount to around 10,000 people over your personal invites. Personal invites. The barista at Starbucks or something better. <laughs> the waitress. Auntie Lisa who has an attitude and is funky with you all the time. And you just bust out, hey, you want to come to church with me? Sit with me. <laughs> and you know you really just want to make her mad. <laughs> We're believing for a 1,000 souls in 2023. Listen, we led, God gave us the opportunity to lead 300 people just on weekends to Christ Jesus. We're going for a 1,000 this year. I don't know how, but I'm praying and I'm believing. Will you believe with us? A thousand people making decisions to surrender life. Jesus. I believe there's a revival coming. We're going to launch an intercessor. We're going to launch a hundred outreaches. <laughs> We're going to do a hundred outreaches this year. You guys are, what the heck? Who do you think is doing all this stuff? We are. Because if my team currently could do what it's done in the past year, if we all work together, the sky is the limit. There is gold in these seats. Are you hearing me right now? There are leaders in these seats. There are history makers in their seats. These are stories waiting to be told that the world is desperate to hear. We were born to make a difference. Let's multiply.
We're going to give coffee. We're going to give prayer. We're going to visit seniors. We're going to go out to high schools because we're not just going to reach people on Sunday. In the book of Acts, there was church happening every single day. I'm not saying we're going to have service, but the church is going to be a movement throughout the week. We're going to empower our small groups to do outreach as a group. We're going to empower our youth ministry to do outreach as a youth. As a church, we're going to have monthly We Love Our City on Saturday mornings and go out and feed the hungry and preach the gospel and serve our communities and go where there's need. We're going to reach people for Jesus. We're going to have serve days where we give a, a, a whole day doing like 20 different outreaches, different teams going out. So do you believe God can do amazing stuff? I believe it. With all these great things, we're going to need prayer. Somebody say pray up. Yeah. Intercessory prayer. God's been speaking to my heart about this need lately. That if we're going to do big things, we need big prayers. Big steps and big moves and big dreams require big prayers. And I was spending time with the Lord the other day. He's like, son, I need you to form an intercessory prayer team of people who are committed to the cause of praying throughout the week for the needs, for the body, for the church, because they will tear down the walls that stand in front of you in the city before you even get to doing the work of serving and preaching. They'll fight the battle in the spirit. As a church, we're going to up our game as a prayer team. But if you feel called to intercessory prayer, please talk to me. Because we're going to form a team that's going to tear down walls and birth the supernatural through this ministry. We're going to launch Pursuit Nights. Are you ready for worship? How many of the worshipers are in the house? I'm wrapping this up. We're going to launch Pursuit Nights. We're going to have a night, one hour of worship and seeking God together as a community. It's just going to be, we're going to let the gifts flow. People are going to get filled with the Holy Spirit, and we're going to be doing that throughout the year. We're going to launch Pursuit Nights. We're going to kick off January with 21 days of fasting and prayer. Do you believe in the power of fasting and prayer today? We're going to start 21 days of fasting and prayer, seeking the face of God to do something beyond beyond our wildest dreams in 2023 and beyond. We're going to launch a multiply hub. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't have a better way to describe it, but it's the precursor to actual campuses. We're going to start smaller forms of groups and teams that will test the soil and go into communities and test the openness and pray over that community. And as we see an openness to the gospel, we will prepare that team to grow and start a new campus. I'm believing by 2024, we will send out our very first campus out here in the South. Sacramento region. God is a God of miracles and God is a God of multiplication. So look out for that. We're believing for North Highlands. We're believing for Rancho Cordova. We're believing for Midtown Sacramento. We're believing for the nations. And my last one, opening day 2023. I mentioned 21 days of prayer and fasting. Y'all still with me right now? 21 days in prayer of fasting. We have three Sundays before that critical Sunday. This is the first new year in the past couple of years where people are making resolutions and they're not living with the fear of COVID like they did in the previous years. Last year, we got punched in the face by, by, by the resurgence of, of COVID, right? People are just like, oh, my gosh, here it is happening again. I'm having PTSD. I'm like, no, don't shut us down again. But God pulled us through that. But listen, this is the first year. Well, I believe there's going to be a move of God to bring people back to himself in a greater way than we anticipated. So those 21 days of prayer and fasting are going to lead up to opening day 2023. Any sports fans in the house? Every year you have an opening day, a season opener. Every year. This is going to be our season opener. 2023, we're opening the brand new year, and we're going, to, we're going to give the devil a punch in the face. After 21 days of getting high in the Holy Spirit and seeking God's face, we're going to launch our new year with inviting everyone we possibly can, blasting social media, filling our community with invite cards, praying for the people that God's going to draw, and we're believing that we're going to see hundreds of people coming to Christ in the new year. Are you believing for lives to be changed and transformed by the power of the gospel? But we need you to be part of that. We're going to launch multiple services, new worship experiences, but it can only happen if we multiply ourselves. That means our worship team's got to grow. It's time to step up. That means we need you on the kids' team. That means we need you on the welcome team. Help us make a difference. Help us reach people who are not here yet. Help us bring the presence of God to people who are longing for hope and salvation through Jesus. It's time to multiply. 
As I close this, let me show you some progress. I'm going to have the ushers prepare to give out our legacy cards because next week is Legacy Sunday. Are you ready for this? Legacy Sunday is next week, and then we're in close-up service. <clears throat> Many of you have been praying about how you're going to give and what God's put on your heart. We want to thank you, those who have already made commitments. But they're going to go through that side, go on and move on to the next one. Show our progress thus far. This is where we are with our teams. So with our legacy offering, someone generously said, I'm going to match up to 7,500 last week. Can you give God a hand of praise for that amazing generosity? <laughs> so with that, at that point, it brings us to 9630. There's still some matching funds available from that generous uh, giver in the house. We're so grateful for the, the heart of generosity represented here. But that's about a third of the way there. I believe we can get there. I believe we can get there. I believe there's people in the house who are going to step up. You're going to say, I'm going to give. I'm going to give generously. I'm going to give. I'm going to give. I want you to really pray and press in and partner with us, whatever that is in your heart, whether it's 500, 5,000, or 200, whatever it is, but would you give generously with us? That's our progress. Next week, we're going to bring that offering, and you can give online. You can even give before, but next week's Legacy Sunday, we're going to give towards all these projects. There's the giving information, um, but uh, we're going to give online. You can give in person. But here's the progress with our dream team. Remember, we wanted to see, we want to see our team grow by 30 more people in 30 days, 30,000 and 30 more people. We're now at 18 people who have joined the team. Come on. 18 people. We're almost there. Come on. And you're next. Come on, move to the next slide. So God's doing something. Thank you for responding. Here's the breakdown. I know we're running out of time, so this is the breakdown of our legacy. Worship experiences, expansion, multiple services. That's what we're looking to do in, in the new year because it creates more opportunity for more people to serve, get involved, to reach people who are not plugged in. 16.7% building and facilities for, for, for expansion and future building, 16.7%. Missions. 16.7%, and then outreach evangelism. As you know, as you heard, this is a big year for outreach for us, and we're going 50%. That's social media, digital, in-person, invite cards, mailers, all of that. Op tools, invite cards, everything that we can put out to our community to reach people. That's the breakdown. Next slide. So how are we going to make it? Next slide. We already covered all that in the last one. Is that it? Okay, give God a good hand of praise. Worship team is going to come up right now. This is what I ask you to do. Here's our next steps for the day. Will you partner with us? Will you say, if you're a part of this church, if this is your home church, will you say, yeah, I'll step up with you guys. 20 more people said I'd give $1,000. Even if it was broken up, we get there, and we're starting the new year strong. It's all about reaching people for Christ. They're going to go ahead and pass out those cards. On that card, you can fill it out, put over whatever amounts on your heart. And then if you will, as the worship team plays, they're going to sing a, a, sing a song, lead us in a song of worship. Go ahead and take a minute or two to fill that out as they do that. Thank you, guys. Then on your way out after service, you can put that in the box. There's boxes at the exits right here. Would you do that? And then next week we'll come back and you can give in person or you can give online. Let's believe God's going to do something incredible. Thank you for your generosity. Let's sing a song. As they feel, take a few minutes, fill that out. On the back of that, also put a prayer request. We're believing for miracles in this season. Whatever your need is, if you have a need, put, write it on the back of that card. If you need a, hand, a, a pen, raise your hand. Let's sing a song, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Have your way, Jesus. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice To fill that out, you can stand with us in worship. Just lift your hands. Multiply us for the Lord. 
Send us, God. Use us, God. People have been experienced the presence of Jesus Christ. So Just one more time. Come on, church. He wants to use your life. Your life can make an impact. for a little bit longer and prayer team lead leaders going to come up if you have a prayer need healing a miracle provision you want to spend some time here at the altar they're going to be here pray for you right after service we'd love to have you if you say i'm interested in serving getting involved you can go to the connect table in fact we're having party with the pastors in a few minutes right there in the front in the lobby you want to join us for a few minutes we'd love to hang out with you get to know you come join us for that um but they're going to sing a song. If you got to go, you can feel free to consider yourself dismissed. But if you'd like to linger a little, feel a little bit longer, please do as we worship God. As they're going to continue and sing. If you need prayer, please come forward.